uh, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your audience. Thank you for coming and uh, to this uh, lecture or for this uh, webinar. What I'm going to say here is actually my experience. You know, for uh, several years of oh, 60, 60 years actually, by uh, reviewing, reading, studying the literature of, in, of geology of Indonesia, in that I finally uh, was that wrapped up in writing a book on this. And what this, uh, and during this time, the, the development, then I had my problems <laughs> in the writing the stratigraphy with the stratigraphy of Indonesia. Let's see. Uh, what happens? Uh, then uh, so this, this is, I don't know. Okay. Well, actually, uh, names in geosciences require specific names in describing describing features. Uh, sorry, the region, these are always problems, you know, because the names that the proposal, the first investigator, and followed by some second author, uh, sometimes not followed by other authors. It is only not only stratigraphic names that it's a problem, but they're confusing, but also tectonic features or units that the main tectonic features are basin. Whole truck belt, etc., subtle features, they all have names. And in general, it are no much problem in naming tectonic features. But stratigraphic uh, names are a problem because they are quite different concepts of terms. Starting uh, starting features, special map units of regional significance, uh, create some problems. Let me wait for this. Uh, <clears throat> a different concept of stratigraphic units, especially as time proceeds. And uh, to avoid root uh, confusion, confusion rules or naming stratigraphy established by geologic organizations, such as in this country, as the uh, Yagi, the, uh, which codifies the codes of stratigraphy. Now, uh, the stratigraphy codes that exist uh, in North America, I think it was in the first in 1933, then 47, revised again, and it's one, the last time I had was 1983. Even this, the, the Indonesian code was also first time it was uh, written in 1975, of which I'm responsible for that too, because I was at that time the president of Yagi, and then it was revised in 1996. And then uh, there's an international guideline in 1976 in 1970, was revised. And then there are many, many certificate goals of other countries. But uh, notably, most of these like, goals of the other countries are following pretty well the North American uh, certificate code, you know, except the Russian. The Russian, uh, they all use time based photography and not recognize little stratigraphy at all. So this is one, one thing. But uh, how, uh, now how look about the stratigraphic clarification? Well, there are actually two types of units. Uh, one is stratigraphic horizon uh, units, which are actually, uh, was that uh, zones or uh, with top and bottoms. And uh, in the beginning, they only used the word geochronology of the word by ten of names like uh, era, uh, period, etc. 
And uh, then there is a need also for uh, countries to have its strategic units, sometimes called time of units using local names, which is not, not directly comparable with the standard geochronology in Europe. But then, again, uh, later on, especially in the US, then the lithostratigraphic units are used because lithostratigraphic are more practical. You don't have, you don't need to go to uh, collect fossils and uh, uh, and uh, possess uh, sign ages of the lithostratigraphic unit. You can directly apply local names. It was uh, first used by the U.S. Geological Survey to the Western, the, the so-called, uh, that a, oh, I, I forgot the name. Anyway, later on, biostatigraphic units become standard worldwide, you know, uh, because they are used uh, fossils as criteria not as in ages, but as fossils as such, based on that and uh, become, the zones are considered worldwide, not uh, local. So biostatic evidence today we know in use in Indonesia, like the blow zones and the that zone, are mostly, uh, was that uh, numerical, uh, as numbers, use numbers as a sequence. Also, later on, magnetic stratigraphic units. These are also uh, <laughs> time based. Uh. <laughs> then uh, we we do have also static horizons. Yeah? I think no static goes to the comfort about this horizon, but they use informal names. But anyway. The uh, International Geology Code uh, does recognize the importance of stratigraphic horizons, such as unconformities, and then also lithologic horizons, biohorizons, and especially the scientific horizons. But then again, later development is uh, becoming of sequence stratigraphy. Yeah? which is not recognized in any static code. Uh, in, the U, in the American static code is not recognized. It is also not recognized in the international guide for static the codes, uh, except as uh, unit unconformly bounded uh, uh, sequences. But in the Indonesian static code, it has to be adopted a sequence of the now, the, the trend is that more and more is to avoid interpretative units, except uh, the coronal stratigraphic units, they are they try to avoid it. But the use of tangible, observable, measurable criteria, such as lithology, uh, fossils, not as time indicators, but as fossil itself, but understood that there are time indicators. But these are tangible. Even the magnetostratigraphic units is based on measurable uh, polarity criteria. It's to be can be measured in the laboratory. So that's the tendency that nowadays, I think mostly all. Uh, Countries use lithostatigraphic uh, units, uh, mostly in uh, mapping, in geological maps, lithostatigraphic units, except probably in regional units, uh, regional maps, like small scale maps, they use uh, probably uh, corner geology. Anyway. <clears throat> There are some basic rules for naming stratigraphic name. I think static name now nomenclature should be valid for all rock types. It, it is sedimentary, igneous, metamorphic. They are, must be valid to name these uh, units of rock types. 
and rock, all rock occurrences, whether it is in the surface, outcrops, or in the subsurface. Yeah, we, it has to be valid for this. Uh, and also in all tectonic duties, whether it is innovation in the mountain ranges, or track belt, this uh, nomenclature should be valid and probably mostly uh, the same. Now, requirement of established articles is also shown for all rock types, all rock occurrences, and in all tectonic units. Okay, then the what have, uh, happened in surface geologic mapping? The criteria that they have given a main basic was surface based geologic mapping. Yeah, for category should be mapped on scale. Probably the smallest, the largest scale is 125,000. Stratigraphic units should have lateral continuity. And in the beginning, categories are time rock units, series, stages, the lateral extension to be time interval equivalent, depending on the fossil content for, and uh, for its time identification. But later on, the stratigraphic are introduced causing a lateral extension problem due to phase change, but applicable for igneous and macrophotics also. Present-day geologic maps are based on later stratigraphic units, except on small-scale geologic maps using geochronology probably. These stratigraphic units are assigned ages or age ranges, which is based on spot sampling, but it's considered valid for the whole unit. So, this is one thing, which is uh, which is the practice that you find a, a, a rock sample that has to be some faucet in it and apply the age for this uh, whole static unit. Now, in, then also uh, we have some surface geologic practices that affect stratigraphic nomenclature. In the subsurface static units, I exhibit in cross sections, you know, mostly. In the surface geological and surface geology and surface geological maps, but in subsurface geology, it is exhibited mostly in as cross sections. Well, very rarely at subcorp geologic maps. Subsurface maps are interfam maps, such as isopark, watches maps, that you must have a minimum thickness than the mappability. So what minimum thickness is there uh, to consider a map, uh, what's that, a stratigraphic unit? Eh? What, 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 what's the minimum thickness? 10, 10, 10 meters, 100 meters, or what? It's not, uh, not very clear. But uh, they're based mostly on well data, cutting data. Now, the, the thing here is that uh, cut things data and uh, well data are uh, systematic sampling. So biostatic graphic data or age <coughs> determining of age based on systematic sampling so more accurate than the surface uh, the surface uh, uh, surface uh, units. And uh, on well data, formation tops can be picked based on lithology mostly. Yeah. But then again, in uh, the subsurface, we use lots of seismic data, especially uh, in this, well, in the, in, in the oil industry. And then there are re reflections, using reflection seismic horizons. Only this thing, horizon, the reflection, the lateral thing is called seismic horizon. It's so well established that seismic reflector represents geologic time services. Now, it is the customary to relate formation tops near to tops, to relate to a formation top, near tops, or interval between tops. So that was uh, early. So because all, uh, you look for all in formation, but uh, not in the horizon. But later on, uh, seismic uh, horizons are simply are independent of formation. They call simple horizon, and usually indicated by color codes instead by 
the name of the form of the formation. Then also we know that the most horizon intervals are recognized to have a structural pattern called sequences. So actually sequence stratigraphy is based on a, the street stratal pattern within two intervals of static horizons rather than based on lithology or anything. Stratal horizon unrated the sequence stratigraphy of regional significance are also recognized, often called events. Yeah, there's uh, many in the uh, that appear in the in the literature about static horizons or or, or simply called horizons, uh, like something like in Central Tomato Basin, the Patani, uh, apa, the but the intrapatani horizon, etc. So the presence of horizons, especially in the sub is quite uh, usual. Now the present status of this uh, naming uh, the nomenclature that uh, the GRDC or the Indonesian Geological Survey has completed a systematic program in I'm sorry, it's not 2020, but in the year 2000, on a scale of 100,000 for Java and Madura, and one to, to, to 250,000 for the rest of the island. And beside astrologians of the sheet maps, and then they describe the little notes, the stratigraphic names appear has been compiled in the stratigraphic collection of Indonesia, which is published in 2003. So there is lots of uh, names there. Yeah? The petroleum industry has practically explored all the bases, generally based on subsurface data, resulting into stratigraphic names expressed mostly in cross sections. And the project data are published in either proceedings or special publications or in Yagi proceedings. The mining industry also exports over the Indonesia, but the results are mainly detailed. For regional scientific names, conform mostly to GRDC. A comprehensive summary and review of the geological results has been given by Van Leeuwen in 1994. And in general, there's no much uh, problem in the stratigraphy there because it's conformed to the GRDC. Now, <clears throat> GRDC lexicon stratigraphic of Indonesia, which is published in 2003, is uh, about 709 pages long, and the number of entries I estimated to be more than 2,000 little stratigraphic names of formation, groups, etc., and members. So there's quite a great number of little stratigraphic names. These stratigraphic units include all types of rocks. The names do not always conform to the uh, code, of course. Many stratigraphic units are not properly named. Some are uh, just yeah. simply, simply called the Jurassic limestone or something. And especially igneous rocks are not named at all. They're just simply called uh, diorite or granite or something like that. But ages are assigned to this formation, or age ranges rather, based on fossils and radiometric dating from spot sampling. Several names have type localities. So this is, I think, uh, 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 the, uh, how, this is, uh, I think, the literature or uh, uh, the book you have to look in to review the, all the that's the graphic names that, that that appear in in Indonesia these days. It has to be remembered that in the past, uh, um, after Van Bemlen, uh, the title graphic lexicon also appear, which is uh, written by Mark. But the number of entries is much much smaller, yeah, less than. So there's a huge number of replicated names in, in Indonesia today, not 
considering or not the, uh, including the names that uh, appear from subsurface or from the oil industry. Well, so the petroleum industry also have exposure. It blocks in surface exposure, but mostly in alluvial plains and offshore areas. The certificates are obtained from the adjacent outcrop areas, or some solely based on real data. No surface equivalent of well and stop locality. Some of the names are coordinated with geography surface and like geologic map, but often using also old literature names. <clears throat> so the study of units are kind of also uh, assign ages or uh, age ranges yeah? based on systematic clamping of bisotography zones. So they are more uh, accurate from the view of the age ranges. <coughs> These are the given that tend to be correlated by seismic reflection. This is also to be, uh, to be noted that stratigraphic units are actually not time uh, units. Yeah? They are. They can. Uh, they can fade edge and shale out or phase change laterally. But seismic reflection tend to be continuous. Yeah, to be laterally much extended. Although probably the uh, the what you call the the reflection become less and less. On the other hand, seismically defined static units and horizon are often named. Yeah? So static names are in a various publication as part of the proceeding and summarized as columnar sections. Uh, some static names are explicitly decided in the data in the formal. But uh, anyway, we have, uh, yes, education. The IPA special publication published a standard category column diagram for established and carbon producing area only, yeah, which is the Atlas uh, IPA oil and gas report Atlas 1988-1999, which are basically stratigraphic units, but no detailed description for each stratigraphic is available. You have to look for the original report for them. Then we have some problems here. Uh, static gravity or similar feature rock type and age, but completely separate from each other. Uh, like intrusives in a central area in Kalimantan, uh, there is a swarm of intrusive or something, hintang intrusive, small blocks distribute with area, cover, uh, intruding in different tectonic units. Then also same drift deposits. You have uh, the center of the deposits are are actually uh, deposited in separate areas or grabbing, but they have the name, same names in uh, in the same basin, in the same outlying basin. So the center of the deposits here uh, they are actually not connected to each other. They're separate, complete separate, just like the intrusives, the synthetic intrusives, they are distributed over the whole wide area, but not actually connected to each other. <coughs> Excuse me. Then there's also the synthetic units in two or more basins of tectonic units. I'm talking, uh, for instance, a South Sanamantra Basin and a mm -hmm. Northwest Java Basin. Uh, most use the Talangaka formation and Baturaja formation. They are in completely two different basins. But then the Barito Basin, Pasir, Pasir Basin, and Asansam Basin in Southwest Kalimantan also have the same uh, uh, stratigraphic uh, system, uh, nomenclature system. Papua Central Range and West Papua Microcontinent, they have also the same stratigraphic uh, nomenclature system, except for the uh, youngest uh, prize in rocks. So 
there are these are these are actually uh, what's that uh, uh, notes that are and uh, confusing. There was a thing of saying something within within the same basin. Yeah? In the Santa Subata case, ex caldus areas and ex tenpack areas have different nomenclature system. They are in the same basin with no uh, nothing in between. In the northeast Java basin, western areas and eastern areas are hung and block of different uh, nomenclature. In the Bogor Trough, uh, which is uh, part of the Northwest Tava Basin. Then uh, there is what is called the Pamali case, which is uh, uh, which I will later see uh, look uh, tell you in the following diagram. And then there's also the Marau uh, series case in the Bogor Talk. Uh, Now here they say the center of Kalimantan. These are intrusives. These intrusives they are all over the place in the Sangau zone, eastern in the in the in the was it uh, Kutai Basin, in the uh, Swanak Mountains, uh, the center, this uh, was it the. This uh, Swanak Mountain. So these are spread all over the place, and each of one is called the Tintang uh, uh, intrusive. Just very small plugs and so on. So, so can you name these small separate things with separate names, or do you have? Can you name it uh, each with a different name? Now then, the, there's the, the case of the central proposal. <laughs> The case of uh, Santa Sumatra. In Santa Sumatra Basin, uh, use uh, mostly stratigraphic uh, nomenclature that was uh, developed by Caltex uh, in the 50s. But then at the same time, the basin is shared with uh, Sanfac. In you know, that area, South East Central Sumatra, which used a completely separate name, with no nothing in between to separate them, no geologic feature to separate them. These are completely within the same basin, and the uh, formation is actually the same but with different names. So that is what uh, what is curious, of course. Okay. Uh, here uh, in the GRDC sheets also in the Santa Sumatra Basin, yeah, which is mapped in uh, from 1982 to 1994. Here there's sheets in the north use the Caltech nomenclature, subsurface nomenclature. Here use the setback nomenclature. Yeah. And also a mix of old, uh, old pre-war nomenclature as well as the uh, as well as Sanfec nomenclature. Here the finance sheet they all use different nomenclature. So it is still in the same basin, and so they have different names for the same unit. Now, in this is the Bogor Trough. In Java, this part of the Northwest Java Basin. This is a very long, folded felt, which is now covered by volcanoes, actually, but it's outcropping between the volcanoes. So we have also a different uh, stratigraphic units because this map not at the same time, but different authors. So we got uh, we got numerous names here, but actually, like this. So the, the different name is the basin. These are the intrusives. So we have them different names, but I think these names are different because of facets changes. Different facets would considered oh, laterally become another formation. So this is 
quite valid. Well, then you can have different uh, stratigraphic uh, lithologic units laterally, yeah, if it is because of rapid changes. <coughs> but in the case of Chandra Sabata, it uh, has nothing between. There's no rapid changes. So, so there's a uh, professor Kusrimadinita. Yep. Three minutes left for presenting. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, there's a case where uh, in the beginning, uh, you know, uh, there is a Pomali formation, which is uh, in Dogon Top, but later it's also Pomali mythology, which is the age is Oligocene, uh, my, uh, Oligocene Miocene. <clears throat> so actually, the, the type locality is on, in Kali Pomali. It is actually the only third out to be uh, Pliocene in age yeah, of our uh, late Miocene in age. And so uh, it was revised that the formation is range in age from Oligocene to uh, late Miocene. But actually, the so called Pomali formation, which is mapped with Oligocene, it is quite different. But similar formation has a long range uh, age. Yeah. Actually, it consists of two formations. So the Oligocene, the Pomali of the Oligocene age turned out later to be uh, not Pomali at all because it's separated by other layers and it's considered to be now as the uh, Chinambo formation. So this is also uh, the Barito Basin and the Sarbi have. These two basins are very separate, but they are, have the same stratigraphic nomenclature. Here also, it's a very separate between the bird head area, which is, uh, which is, uh, which I, I think it is, I call the West Papua, uh, the West Papua for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for land basin or not for land. And uh, the central range, which is quite different because it's, it's separated by uh, deep marine uh, shales rather than contiguous, but still have the same names. Now, case of problem, names are taking a virtual lateral across the cosmos solely for the terminal lithology criteria, disregarding the historic duration boundaries. Names are taking different also of the seat independently. All industry operate a different block within the same basin, often name their formation independently, disregarding boundary boundaries. Device and navigate value for whole rock, which is currently no one is. In the research paper, also disregard something with codes. Then also the development of new stratigraphic concept, which also affect, uh, cause problems in naming, such like the base of sand concept, if uh, tertiary basin for the sand drift gravel deposits. Yeah? These are new uh, concepts that changes the, uh, uh, the, the names. So I have some recommendations for the, uh, for the, uh, the graphic units. The uh, static uh, horizon or regional segment should have formal names, such as regional and angular and cooperative by horizon, the static horizon including seismic horizon, except sequence boundary. Second boundary should, should have uh, not uh, formal, but uh, use uh, more worldwide the names. Nomenclature is required for tectonic units, particular sediment basis should be considered in the uh, new certificate, uh, the revised certificate code. No requirement for formal static names was to give such a detailed description of type segment to be simplified to accommodate for igneous and metaphorical rocks. Simply by mentioning its type of quality is sufficient. But still, the presence of uh, details and description of type sections 
as required in the present SSI is still uh, desirable. However, its publication can be deferred in the II. AI is the type of publication on type section as reference for future theory studies, research, and exploration. Mm -hmm. Then, IAG should have a standing committee to monitor and review something of name and resolve the problems associated. Review uh -huh. the existing static uh -huh. names and declaring the names of formal or informal. Now we can begin with the selection of Indonesia. As a matter of fact, I have also uh, my own version of static graphic collection. Uh, actually, a database on Excel of uh, all the names uh, of the uh, GRDC maps uh, units in, of Indonesia. It's probably the same as this uh, printed uh, book. An annual review of publication on the Georgia of Indonesia on the appearance of new static names. The committee should publish its finding in an annual report. Yagi should have a program for establishing type sections of every static name by sponsoring student final year or even master thesis to do section matching and the liberal analysis to establish type sections. Now, I have also a combination for revision. I think sequence strategy is adopted by the second uh, SSI should be revised. I think the SB, a sequence one, it should be considered as strategy of horizon should name after its radiometric ages, such something like SB20, SB4.5, which is low globally valid as it's tied to global sea level changes. Sequence names should be given formal name, but use the dominating photographic name in the sequence as name. For instance, instead of uh, <coughs> of uh, giving new names, just use the formation names, but uh, use it as in instead of Gayong or just sequence. Gayong sequence, but uh, the sequence. Instead of uh, using a new graphic name, it will become uh, more confusing. For can the certificate adopt as it wants to be revised? It's valid only for quaternary deposit, as the normal phrase is generic based on geomorphology and then it's present day processes. Name of pre culture organic should be then to be the interpretation of its ontology. So it should be only valid for quaternary deposit or even Holocene deposit. And the standards, uh, the SSI code should not be, it's not valid for quart quaternary Holocene deposit. These deposits are best name of its morphological feature. Uh, ongoing processes rather than by its ontology, like the Bahakam Delta deposit, Budakan Reef, the Solo Terrace, or even it's not the uh, not name at all. Yeah, so it's at Aluvi or Aluvens or something. So I think uh, I must have uh, something uh, forgotten, but that is all I mm -hmm. could have to 